Hello and welcome to Platform Orchestrators, the missing middle of internal developer platforms. I'll introduce myself in just a moment, but let's start with how do you build a platform, right? And I'm going to show this meme now. I love this meme, right? You aren't doing it wrong. No one knows what you're doing. I think that's kind of twofold in this level in that platform engineering is a relatively new discipline, right? And many of us building platforms are not exactly sure what we're building or why we're building it for sometimes. So I really want you to focus on why you're building your platform. And I think, how do you build your platform? I see three main approaches. The first one being this top-down application developer focused approach. And this manifests itself often around backstage. Love some backstage, right? But I'll, I'll cover that more later. Backstage service catalog is fantastic, but the support for day two operations, not so much. I also see this bottom-up operations infrastructure driven approach to building a platform. And this is like the Terraform workflow is fantastic, but infrastructure abstractions are leaking through to developers. They have to understand HCL, Kubernetes CRDs, a bunch of other stuff too. I'm going to pitch today that there's this missing middle, this middle out platform engineering focused approach to building platforms that I think is really powerful if we get it right. This is delivering everything as a service, focusing on encapsulating and abstracting process automation and providing fleet management at scale as well. Very quickly, this is me at Daniel Bryant UK on most of the interwebs. My background began in Java development, moved through into architecture, ops, and then platform building. I built a few, pla few platforms. I've had some successes, had some failures too as along the way. And at Ambassador Labs, I focused on API gateways. Now I'm working with the Sintaso folks and several other folks looking at things like Kratix and platform building in general. So let's go back a couple of years when I did the uh, Platform Con 22 talk. And I looked back at my career, particularly as a Java developer and Ruby on Rails developer, where I was using uh, Cloud Foundry and Heroku. And then I moved on to Cloud. And then I moved on to Mesos and ultimately Kubernetes. And I kind of outlined the challenges I had as a developer learning all these things. If we look at the bottom right of the slide here, you can see that I was sort of relatively figuring out there's three layers to what a platform should offer. And we were calling it a developer control plane. At the time I created this graphic, I was at Ambassador Labs. And we were focused on creating a developer control plane. Let's zoom into that slide a little bit more. You can see that I was focused on code, ship, and run in the bottom, the red, the green, the blue. And then I think CNCF technology is just fantastic for that space. But then I had this kind of notion of a custom UI, which was backstage or clutch at that time, right? And then this kind of I wasn't exactly sure what this layer in the middle was, but it was around integrated workflows, CRDs, APIs, um, you know, leveraging webhooks. But it was really about orchestrating a lot of the stuff and providing a good API onto the platform. Now, at the same time, Gartner sort of was talking about platform engineering. It's becoming a thing. And you know when Gartner's talking about it, it's a real thing, right? And the hype cycle they do, I love uh, looking at these. And this is from uh, November uh, last year. They actually uh, put platform engineering uh, as riding the peak of inflated expectations. The red arrow points out for folks on a small screen. This means we're about to go over the edge, right? The roller coaster ride down into the trough of disillusionment. And you can make of the Gartner models what you will. I do find them very useful. And I do worry that a lot of us are spending a lot of time and money on platform engineering and not fully thinking through some of the layers, the abstractions, and the kind of jobs to be done that the platform should do for our organization and for our developers too. There's a great article called What is Platform Engineering by the Gartner folks. Uh, I encourage you to read this, whether you're an individual contributor, leadership, C-level. It's a, it's a consumable article for wherever you're coming from. I really like the diagram. You can kind of see three levels in that diagram, right? The product, the digital platform, and the infrastructure complexity, kind of three levels there. And they explicitly called out developer experience and productivity. You need self-service capabilities and automated infrastructure operations. This kind of dovetailed with what I was thinking at the time. And again, not claiming I invented anything here, definitely standing on the shoulders of giants, but I really liked it when my thinking was kind of in line with what Gartner was saying too. So the why of platforms are, why are we building a platform? Now, every platform has to be somewhat unique to the organization that it's being built within or built for. You've really got to understand your customers, your developers, your workflows, your compliance, regulation, governance needs, fleet management needs. These things are really important, but there is some general goals I think are relevant to a platform just in general. You want to go faster. Platform teams need to provide everything as a service, make it super easy for me as a developer to like reliably and sustainably deliver value to end users. Kind of fancy words, but that means just shipping code, delivering value to users. Like that is a big thing the platform needs to do. 
You want to decrease risk. Now, this I see a lot, in particular in platform teams and SRE teams. You're looking to automate a lot of the manual processes in reusable components. So if suddenly a security posture changes or a regulation changes, you want to be able to roll that out to all the folks affected. A good example of this is the Log4J situation we all saw a few years back, right? There's kind of like fixing it within the software, but you could mitigate it with some network rules as well. This is a good example of being able to automate some of those manual processes. We dive perhaps more into the infrastructure layer. You want to be able to manage and scale your platform and you want to scale those uh, resources as a fleet. Something I've definitely struggled with. I built a few platforms back on uh, EC2, Amazon, I built a few platforms back on Kubernetes around a single cluster back in the day. And we did struggle as we scaled out those uh, clusters, those VPCs. And thinking about this thing up front is really valuable. If you can get that fleet management baked into your platform, it makes your life much easier day two, day three, day 500, right? Looking a little bit more now at the top-down app dev focus rollout of a platform. I mentioned earlier on, I'm not picking on Backstage, but it's like the most popular thing out there, right? And I do love some Backstage. It's got some challenges too, as with any bit of tech, right? But I see a lot of folks saying Backstage is my platform, kind of it's your portal, right? It's not necessarily your platform, but developers go here, spin up new applications, deploy and, and view metrics. I love the developer experience with Cumbers Backstage. Spotify are just really good at this stuff, right? The UX is good. The service catalog is fantastic. The extension mechanism, plugins, fantastic stuff too. The snag is it's a TypeScript kind of framework, right? And a lot of folks are just using Backstage and the plugins as a facade that calls infrastructure APIs. Great for day zero, great for day one, not so good for day two operations when you're managing sort of infrastructure that's already in, in the field, already being deployed. Um, and even managing the portal itself can be tricky at times. If you look at that bottoms up operations focus rollout, that infrastructure focus rollout, I'm seeing a lot of you know Terraform, but it can be other technologies, CDK, CloudFormation, whatever. And this is often the infrastructure led, you know, Terraform is my platform. I can infrastructure all of my infrastructure. So I can orchestrate all of my infrastructure via HCL and cron jobs, and the GitOps pipeline automatically deploys applications. Now, don't get me wrong here. Love Terraform, love infrastructure as code in general, and I'm a big supporter of GitOps. Hat tip to Weaveworks and, and the folks there involved in this. The great thing is everything as code is what we're kind of aiming for. Things like Terraform, CloudFormation, highly automatable. Love that aspect. But I did find as a developer, the infrastructure abstractions leaked out towards developers. And the more things we had, the more the system grew, the more the abstractions leaked, and the more my cognitive load, my sort of need to understand things, the more that increased, which was a challenge at times. I did find, particularly when I worked at big financial organizations and other organizations, at scale, the diversity of tech requires almost something else to orchestrate and manage Terraform and other things. There's just too much stuff in the mix. You have Terraform, you have some CloudFormation, you have some Bash, you have some mainframe stuff, right? And you need almost a layer on top of that to provide some sanity and a good API to call into that. So I've hinted a few times, this missing middle, right? And I think... I like to look at what smart folks are doing in the industry and the cross-plane folks are like doing some really good work uh, in this space. They've got their kind of claims at the top, the app dev focused uh, interface onto cross-plane itself, onto the API. They've got their infrastructure management at the bottom and they pulled out this notion of composite resources and functions now as well, which for me is that kind of orchestration part of the platform. I also saw in the Canoe framework, if you haven't bumped into it, super interesting, well worth a read. And they were talking about the, um, deploying uh, cloud native apps and they kind of split it into application and operation. But even they kind of focused on this need to orchestrate things, orchestrate the deployments, orchestrate the platforms, the infrastructure. They were diving into this kind of missing middle too. Now, the good folks at Humanitech explicitly called out platform orchestrators in their reference architecture. I think this is based on McKinsey's work. I remember seeing a McKinsey uh, um, presentation a few years ago at PlatformCon, or maybe last year at PlatformCon. And the um, reference architecture here is great. Dev portal, application focused layer at the top, platform orchestration called out in the middle there, right? And then the infrastructure is kind of spread around at the bottom and a little bit to the right of this diagram too. But I think the Humanitech folks are thinking like I'm thinking, like we're, many of us are thinking too. And last but moment least, over on the right here, we have Kratix, and this is what I'm working with at the moment, the, the project, and this is explicitly a platform orchestration tool. We have the Promise API, which encapsulates a lot of the platform components, and this whole thing is built around that missing middle. It works really nicely with Backstage, it calls out your infrastructure, be it Crossplane, be it um, uh, other uh, Terraform, other code as well, but that workflow layer, that orchestration there is explicitly called out as really, really valuable. 
Now, this is a bit of an eye chart, but I wanted to kind of summarize what I'm thinking with those three layers. And there's a blog link if you prefer to read or you want to slow down and, you know, pass this in your own time, blog link at the bottom there. But this is kind of what I'm thinking with the three levels of platforms at the moment. And I'm talking about sort of the why and how, the who, the what, and the example tech as well. So diving specifically into the platform orchestration layer, this for me is the where you provide everything as a service, you abstract and encapsulate process automation, and you provide fleet management as well. The key thing is this is aimed at the kind of platform engineer level, but your customers are developers and the folks you're consuming stuff from typically are operators and infrastructure folks. If we look at the what column, you're focusing on the platform API. Now, I'm a bit biased. I love the notion of Cratic's promises as the API, but you can also see on the right here the Humanitech resource definition, cross-plane compositions, and the Argo and Flux CRDs for like doing your rollouts. They're all kind of focused on the platform API rather than the infrastructure API. And they can be called via a UI. They can be called via the CLI. They can be called via an API. It's a nice level of abstraction there. I think if we focus on this middle layer and kind of push upwards and, and downwards for the integration with the portal, integration with the uh, infrastructure, a lot of value is to be had there and you, and you get that kind of nice abstraction level. So going back to the Gartner post I pulled out, right, if you look again, I think there is that three layer there. They've got the product and service teams, everything as a service, dev portal, calling into that reusable component layer of tooling, platform services, knowledge. This for me is the platform orchestrator kind of role. There's the infrastructure composition at the bottom here. This is where you have your IAC, your infrastructure as well, right? And I really like the way they've kind of stacked this up. So think a little bit more about platform orchestration. What are your options here, right? There's a bunch of tools out there that do some form of platform orchestration. I've mentioned many of these already. I think from the top, you have sort of like the commercial tooling, the Humanitech Mash Driver, Query Port, rolling down, like the back stack is becoming a sort of a increasingly talked about. I saw that at KubeCon recently. Uh, the Canoe framework I mentioned, uh, KubeVela and the OAM framework. I've not heard so much about that recently, but I studied it a few years ago and it's very interesting. Cratics, the notion of promises in the middle there, and then you kind of can build your own thing. Like, with long as you're bearing in mind the platform orchestration ideas, you can build your own thing with the CNCF tech. Now, I think the thing to bear in mind here, everything comes with a trade off, right? I think at the top, you've got the more opinionated uh, frameworks. You get started quicker, you know, bang for buck on day one is pretty high. If you don't fully dial into those opinions, that can cause friction over time. At the bottom, you've got the less opinionated stuff, and you can do whatever you like here, but you've got to um, take the pain, you know, you own it as well, right? I'm often looking for this kind of like perfect middle balance, the Goldilocks balance, like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, that's kind of my reference there, right? And I'm thinking this, that's something to think about is this kind of like notion of getting a Goldilocks framework for supporting your platform building efforts. So wrapping up, this is a whistle stop tour, has to be in 15 minutes, right? But what I want you to get, uh, I want to get you thinking about is building your platform intentionally. Really, really important not to kind of fall into the portal, fall into infrastructure as code. They're both really valuable, but think about the way you're composing your whole platform. Watch out for this midding, missing middle. If I can say it correctly, the missing middle, the platform orchestrators, which ThoughtWorks have pulled out in their tech radar, well worth a read. They mentioned uh, Humanitech, they mentioned Kratics there as well. I think this is a really interesting area of development over the next few years. If you're struggling with scaling day two ops with your portal or you're having infrastructure abstractions leaking up to developers, these are two cues for conversations in my mind. Maybe I haven't got that middle layer quite right. And this is why I'm seeing that problem as I scale my platform out across the org. Focus on the platform as product. I haven't got too much time today to go into this notion, but I really like it. And if you do think about your platform as a product, you're thinking about your customers, you're thinking about their jobs to be done, and you're building correct abstractions to make sure that day zero is good, but day one and day two are good too. So I really like this notion. Many good folks are talking about platform as a product. I encourage you to read more about it and find out more. I hope this has been useful to you. Feel free to reach out at Daniel Bryant UK on most of the interwebs. My blog posts are there, my presentations are there. Love to get involved in the conversation. Thanks for your time.